one. What the heck was that? <laughs> <laughs> Hello! We got the ghosts of Christmas present. <laughs> Welcome to the 96th episode of the MC Knitting Adventures podcast. My name's Colleen. And my name is May. Welcome returning viewers. And for those of you watching us for the first time, we're so glad you could join us. On today's adventure, we're going to be talking all about Christmas crafts. So you might want to be stay tuned for that piece. But before we begin talking about all our crafts and all what we've been up to, Colleen will talk about what we're wearing. So we are actually wearing the same thing and they look very different. So it is the Katie Shawl by Cozy Up Knits. We love their podcast. I'm actually shocked that you're saying that. I was like, what? That we're wearing the same yeah. thing? Well, here's what we did. Um, first of all, mine is knit with Midnight Craving Yarn Company. And the purple is the amethyst brooch. And if you ask me the other color, don't remember. But um, I really like this pattern. And I was making this and held up just the start of the shawl to me and to May. What do you think? She said, I really, really like that. I want one. So I thought, okay, well, if I just make the first part of the shawl and is a triangle. So the first part of that triangle and then loop the ends and sew it together, you would have something you could slip over your neck. So May's is in Barocco Comfort Sock. Nice and soft, it's nylon and it's acrylic, which is great. Um, and so we look very different, but the pattern itself. So any shawl, most often if it's a triangular shawl, take a look at what the very first part of the pattern is. And if it's something with some pattern or some texture, think about if you wanna make something smaller, then just make that first bit of the triangle and loop the ends. Wow, that is amazing. It is. So that's really what like we're it. wearing. Out oh, one other thing, I am wearing a Knox Mountain Knitco uh, shawl cuff, which, which oh, I cool. love. I don't often wear them because my shawls tend to be smaller these days, but it does hold it up nice and I'm not worried about things falling apart. And I'm also wearing paint that I can't get off my fingers. <laughs> does that count? Crafting. That's what I'm saying. Crafting, Crafting. fingers. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we're wearing. And next we're going to talk about finished objects. My first finished object you've seen, but you haven't seen it blocked. And that is the Souvenir Shawl by Maria Samuelson. I really do love this pattern. If you have that special skein uh, fingering weight yarn that you've bought and don't know quite what to do with, this is a great pattern. So we had gone to Feather Your Nest in Sarnia and we had picked up, I had picked up, some La Bien Ami, and this is their Cash Merino, which is beautiful yarn, by the way. It is gorgeous. Now, at that time, they only had 50 gram um, skeins, so I bought two. And this is what this looks like. Wow. I'm glad she was rubbing her hands to get the oh, paint off. Oh, yeah, I still have paint on my hands. <laughs> ah! But I have scrubbed them. It's I know you have. Come up there. So you can see that the lace has opened up and you can feel how soft it it's is. It's beautiful. I am really happy. I love the it. color. love the weight. Exactly. It love the beautiful. pattern. I do. I this really, might be really one like of my it. favorites after all. Of I really, really like it. I really like that one. Yeah, You've never really worn this one yet? I haven't. It would be nice to see what that looks like on. Exactly. And it's going to be nice and light. And it opens it up. That's I'll for give sure. You that so we don't put it on the wood over there okay. and it catches it. That's perfect. So that's my first finished object. Now my second finished object also used La Bien Ami, but this is their Merino DK. And what I wanted to do was to make the Petite Knit Sophie scarf, which is all over the internet right now, and all over Instagram and all over Ravelry, and I love it. Now I wanted to use up. Um, the entire skein. So let me talk about things that you can do to make your life easy. Okay, so I haven't blocked this. Um, you can see the ends, I'm, they're woven in, but I haven't blocked it because I have to decide, is it nice being the way that it is or do I stretch it out and make it longer? But I don't think I need to, so that's my debate. It looks pretty long the way it is. I, I think I was so. thinking it was already blocked the way it feels. I know, it's garter stitch, it's great. Now, there is a, on May's end, there is a bulb stitch marker and that was important for me because it lets me know what the right side is. So when I was weaving in ends, I could weave it in on the other side because oh. you don't want to weave in ends on the right side because it wouldn't be good. I'm sure that's a good little tip. It is. I'm, so I'm happy with this. It is the same color as the other one. I have tried this on and it really sits nicely and I get it round 
uh, a couple of times around and then a little flip over. Yeah, very nice. I like yeah. that. I love the color of that. Exactly. The last one. These are nice. So I might try that again, but put a little bit of alpaca in it um, to give it a little bit of a halo is what they call it. All right, my last finished object is called The Lounging Top by Hoki Locatelli. And what I used was Cascade Yarns uh, Heritage Silk Peruvian Tones. And I love this. It isn't blocked. I was going to, and then it was going to be wet, and there you go. So it looks wow. like it's a summer top, because it is. <laughs> and I got it started in the summer and then didn't get it finished. So I could wear it over a turtleneck. It might be nice right. to wear kind of at Christmassy time. Right. But you can see that we've got, this has to be blocked out because it keeps flipping. Same thing here. And the bottom does as well. I need to make sure I block it out. But I'm really, really happy with this. It feels nice on. And I bought three skeins of this yarn, and I only used two. So I have another skein to make a one tiny. skein shawl. Most, most normal people would, wear, <laughs> would be three skeins. Well, I'm a little bit tiny. I'm short. Let's just say yeah. that. No, it looks really nice on too. Yep. I love it. It's going to be you. nice in the spring or fall, whatever. Exactly. It's nice. Yeah, I'm really happy with yeah. it. So it's nice when you finish a, nice a sweater weight. and it fits. Yeah. And it's got that little bit of silk in it and it makes it drape nicely. So those are my finished objects. And May, how about you? Finished objects. Yes, I do have one finished object. Just before I closed up the garage and the workshop in the garage, mm -hmm. I was able to finish up my um, zebra and uh, my wood project. Now, I already had this... I had this frame on hand already, Colleen. This, right. This frame here on hand. Oh, I love this. I and love this then picture. I just drew the picture of my zebra. Right. And then I traced it onto the wood. Right. Then I cut out the wood. I guess. And then I painted a... Um, Piece. So you can have you can use a Mac Tac okay. or different things for your black background, but it's just a very thin piece of canvas. Oh, that's amazing! There that I painted on, but you can use cardboard, paint it, um, whatever you need to do. Right, and then it kind of stands out. So it looks really yeah. nice. I love this. And it, it was nice that I had this frame on hand. I'm exactly. going to look for other frames that I have and maybe do this. That's in a the great future. idea. Right. It's great. It looks beautiful. You did an amazing job. Yeah. She goes out in the garage. I never know what's coming in. And then she brings this in. I think, <laughs> how do you do that? Yeah, so that's, that's my amazing. finished object. And that'll be probably my last uh, scroll saw piece until the spring because mm -hmm. I'm not able to get into the garage in the cool. I could if I get a heater, but you never know. Yeah, that could be a Christmas debating. present. I don't know. Yes, we've been talking <laughs> about that. Yeah. It hasn't come to fruition yet, but you know, you, you never, never know. know. So those are our finished objects, and next we're going to talk about works in progress. My first work in progress comes from a kit that I got at Lovecrafts. It's a great site. Um, they send things very quickly. And just keep an eye out for sales because I know that I got this on sale. And it is a counted cross stitch kit. It comes with the Ada cloth, the embroidery floss. It came with felt to make a back on there and it came with the hoop itself so all that was in the kit um, and all I really have to do is I have to press it out nicely and then I have to and then put you put it this the, on the back on the back that's exactly. nice I like that exactly that's I'm really really happy with we that we can have a whole wall of these when the time you're done I know that's what They're I should so do cute. yeah yeah I really like we have enough wall space in the house to yes do that. we do so, so that's the first one now my second work in progress is another counted cross stitch um, kit that I got at Mary Maxim in Paris, Ontario. And I have this thing about gnomes. Um, so this had the Ada cloth, the fabric covered hoop, which I really see the fabric covered hoop. It's cool. I really, really liked that piece of it. Um, and it had the needle instructions and the thread for that. So I am getting there. So it's got those lovely, there's three little gnomes. That's it. It says Merry Christmas and ho, ho, ho. So I keep hoping I'm going to get it done for Christmas. I got a little this bit more. This is tedious because, I mean, I can't believe the, the you know, buffalo plaid and this, this little I hat know. here. It's not tedious. You just have to, when you're counting, count properly. Mm. Every once in a while, I'll miss a space and then I'm in trouble. It looks but I've done pretty well. It is going to be nice in there. I'm really yeah. happy with that. I'm not sure whether it'll get done for this Christmas because I'm trying to get a few other things done. But we'll, we'll, we'll add it to our wall. We will add it to our wall. We're going to have a whole bunch. That'll be fun. <laughs> All right. So those are works in progress. And my next work in progress you've seen, it's a little bit bigger, so I wanted to show you. And that is the Swarm by Hannah Masiejuska. I hope that was right. Now, this color is brilliant. I've seen it in a similar one. I am 
making this lovely one that's this lilac-y purple kind of thing. And this is one that's going to block out. It is reversible. Now, so we've talked about this one before. We in have. The last podcast. Exactly. Yes. Because I remember seeing this pattern of exactly. thinking it was shells. Exactly. Now it takes, a, it takes a little longer. It's hard to be doing it while you're watching TV. And so far, so good. I've been able to. But I'm to. loving the pattern. So that's the end of the first ball and then you need two balls to do this so it's going to take a while but i just wanted you to know that i haven't forgotten that i'm working on it <laughs> and i just keep plugging away at it and it'll be nice i'm really happy it's so soft and light and the yarn is the concept by katya silky lace ex uh, merino extra fine silk so the drape is brilliant i really really like that so i keep i'll just keep plugging away that one probably won't be ready till it's summertime <laughs> hopefully i'll get it done before then now, my next work in progress is a pair of socks, and it is from the 2022 Advent 24 Stripe Skein um, by the Cozy Knitter. Now, I'm just going to give you the warning, okay? Because the warning is that if you don't want to see what the colors are in this, um, because it changes every year, then you're just going to have to avert your eyes, turn your eyes away for a little bit, because I just want to show it what I've got done. So I'm making these socks two at a time. And I was trying to do a stripe at a time. I may have done a little bit more than that. Uh, but I started them and then had to rip it out because they were too big. They were too wide. I think this is lovely plump yarn. So I'm really, really happy with this. Now, what I'm really happy even more with this, and I'm just going to flip this, is I've made these little tiny heels. Boy, those look small, but they fit my feet because I've had them on. And what I am using is the butterfly heel from the Rumple Socks by K.F. Jones. And it is similar to a short row heel. Um, I'm making 56 stitch socks, which is why they look as small as they do. But I, as I said, I've had them on and they fit great. And I'm just about ready for the toe. Now, May talked about me being tiny. My feet are definitely tiny because <laughs> I still have this much yarn left. And last time I ordered one of these um, Advent skeins from the Cozy Knitter, I ended up being able to make two pairs of socks. I and, think it would be with this one, maybe. I think know. so. Maybe shorter, but it might exactly. work out. Exactly. So, so I'm really, really happy with those. And how did you like how this heel fit? Like it I looks... love it. Really? Yep, I really love it. I might have knit a, um, the, the leg maybe a little bit longer because it sits a little lower on my heel. Um, but it fits nice. Like it, it's snug. And that's what I need because most often with socks, they're too big for my feet anyway. Wow. Very nice. There we go. So See, I'm happy with, something with that. that. Absolutely. So those are my works in progress. And May, how about works in progress for you? I do. I've been busy puttering away with little things mm -hmm. and I'll share that with you in the craft section. Sounds great. So next we're going to talk about our Christmas craft adventure. On our Christmas craft adventure, we're going to be talking about Christmas past, Christmas present, and Christmas future. Now, Christmas past, I think we'll start there. Okay. And perfect. these are ornaments, Colleen, that we have received last year, which kind of inspired me to give personalized ornaments or knitted ornaments because it was such a nice touch that we got some friends exactly. to do this. Mm -hmm. that, that kind of inspired me to do that. Right. And so we'll talk about what we do when we open up and we're always very surprised at what comes out because we forget that we've had them. But it brings <laughs> back really good memories. Exactly. And I'm sure you do the same thing when you take out your tree and and all that type of thing. That's but right. if you, maybe if you don't have a tree, if you have Hanukkah, you bring out presents and it's the same type of thing. Right. Now, the first one was um, this little ball that they knit, which was really cool. Mm -hmm. And it has personalized MC mm -hmm. and it has our little car on there. Exactly. How yeah, cute really, is that? Yeah, we really, really, really So that was really it. nice to open up this year. And then I think the year before we got this one, mm -hmm. which was um, personalized with the MC and the little car. Yeah, which very makes cute. me smile every time we put that on the tree. So, so thank you, mm -hmm. Carrie and Linda, for those. Mm -hmm. And also, um, one of the crafts that we did in the past was I forget that we did these also. Exactly. Is that we did this little soldier guy. Right. Which is really cool. And that's not just little uh, pots. I think one, two, three, four, five pots that you use for this guy. Mm -hmm. You can even do bigger ones if you want to. Right. And exactly. you just glue them on with crazy glue or um, 
your glue gun mm -hmm. and you just paint them and then just add all the details. Ah, right, that is brilliant. You and then you job. were nice enough to knit this pom pom. Right. So that was kind of cool to bring out. I made exactly. a couple of those. Exactly. I forgot all about those actually. So that brings us to Christmas. Oh, these were a past object too. Exactly. Do you want to talk a little yep, bit about Yep, I'm going to talk about some past ones for okay. me as well. So first of all, let's, I'll let you hold those okay. up. So these are from um, the Church Mouse Yarns and Teas. It's Church Mouse at Home and it's the Jolly Wee Elf. So I made one that was smaller and one that was larger and just interchanged what colors they were. And these are great because you put um, some, it's like weights in the bottom so they sit, will sit up. Oh, right. Exactly. So it's nice. They're not going to fall all over the place. So once again, I went, oh yeah, I forgot that I'd made those. Yeah. So that is something that was made past. for last, in past. Um, another thing that I did for last year. Oh, I love this. So what I did was... We do birthday socks, and so what I did for everybody is I made them a wee sock ornament using the same yarn that I made their socks out of. And I used the Mini Stocking by Polka Dot Creek, which is a lovely pattern. That's Shelley Dupont. It's a really, really good pattern, easy to follow. That is cute. Um, now, Shelley also has a mini sweater, which I've done. You made some little hangers for them, but... I think they're off in your store trying to be sold. Um, and she also has a mini mitten pattern as well, which I've not made yet, but I do have the pattern. That would be a little tiny, wouldn't it? Well, it's actually bigger. It's bigger than the sock. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, so was exactly. the sock like tedious to make that? You know sock? what? It doesn't take any time at all. And I figured out where how to make that at the end of it. So nice. I was, yep, I'm nice. really happy with that. Perfect. And then the other thing I did, this was with this yarn that was for your socks. Oh, nice. And this is by the Christmas Tree Garland. It's a crochet pattern by Lila Lise, I think. And that's what it looks like. These are cute. Now, to be honest with you, this is yarn that doesn't have any wool in it. And I think if I had wool and I was able to block it, it would have sat better. Right. These ones tend to have a little bit of a spin in them. Right. But I'm really happy with them. Yeah, those are great. And I love the pattern here. You could put them all on a string like exactly. that. Exactly. They, they make the garland. Yeah, it's really nice. Exactly. And you could do little lights across there, like exactly. little knitted lights. You know, I should do that with everybody's sock. Anyway, right. we'll work on that. Yeah. Okay. No, ideas, ideas, you know. Uh, always ideas. Yeah. All right, so, so those, those, are, are, those my are all past. kind of like past things. Now, Christmas present, we thought, okay, what are some new ideas? What are some new things we can come up with? And I really like wood, and it was kind of a combination. Right. So I thought I would get these um, wooden discs, as you see. Beautiful. And they come, I got them from Amazon, and they come pre drilled, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And then I just gesso them, and then I paint on them, and then. Um, She's holding up my favorite one. Oh, and then <laughs> I, I do a whole thing with um, glue, like, mm -hmm. um, what do you call that glue? Mod Podge. Mod Podge glue, just mm -hmm. to hold down the edges so it doesn't fall off and right, free. That's and that. great. They last a little longer. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm going to do a whole tutorial on how I do paint. My oh, that's things. fantastic. And That'd be really helpful. Yeah, because I think it's a personalized thing, and how I make them personalized is in there, too. Right. So oh, good. I know people that really like cardinals, mm -hmm. so that was kind of That's a personalized type thing. Yeah. And I also know people that really like knitting, and so there's a knitter like that one, one that too. personalizes it. And we have Pickleball Friends, mm -hmm. and they really, we've given these out, and they really appreciate them. Exactly. And on That's the really back, I have Pickleball Buddies. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So that kind of personalizes it that yep. way. And I know someone else that likes gnomes. Mm -hmm. Don't know who. Yeah. <laughs> and um, just more detailed. And this one has Merry Christmas Me and Colleen on the back. Oh, I like that. One. Uh, for people that like those cars and that. Exactly. Now, before I bought these off of Amazon, Colleen, mm -hmm. there, I bought some in a craft store, but they were very tiny. Oh, and I okay. thought, I can't paint anything on that. They're Not, just too tiny. So I didn't right. quite know what to do with it. Right. So then I came up with an idea to join them together. Oh, look at that. Those are great. Yep. And in the video that I made tutorial... I have showed you how I join those together. There's oh, different ways brilliant. you can do it. Right. In the tutorial will actually glue them with a little dowel, okay. but you can also drill holes in. Talented. Da -da. She's just so talented. So that was a good use of all the small ones. Exactly. So that's what I've been up to, and that's been a little time consuming painting those and and uh, preparing them and, exactly. and, and preparing the video. All so. right. It's going to be a great video, that's for sure. Okay. Now, as far as me and Christmas present, um, we were playing in a pickleball league called the Dill Pickles. 
So I have to... We're Colin and I are a team, by the way. We are a team. And we, we do <laughs> and we, okay. And we wear the same t-shirt. Now, any other time is not okay to wear no. a t-shirt. <laughs> but during this pickleball league, mm -hmm. um, it actually works because yeah. we're always on the same team and it's right. kind of a, it's a fun exactly. league. Exactly. Exactly. So, so there is a Tony who is the convener. We thought, what could we do nicely for him? So I went on Ravelry and I found this Jolly Pickle Knit Ornament. Dill Pickles, Jolly Pickle Knit Ornament. And that's by Yard Inspirations. And it is a free pattern. And who knew there was a dill pickle pattern? <laughs> exactly. Oh, and knitters can knit anything. I'm sure Exactly. Of it. So I'll let you hold that okay. one up. So there it is. So we are going to have to let that get that to Tony this weekend, and he can. Uh, what kind of stitch did you make to make it all bumpy like that? It is called the moss stitch, and it's perfect. Like honestly, if you have a either a young child, a grandchild, or a young child, or you know somebody who really likes pickles, this would be a brilliant ornament yes. for them. Now, uh, in pickleball, we just love pickleball, don't we? Yes, we do. We have um, a lot of fun And if I urge you to go out and give it a shot if, if you haven't done so yet, mm -hmm. um, it's just a great game. And it's such a fun league, all the names that they have. We're actually called the Kitchenettes. Right. We call it ourselves because of the kitchen in the pickleball area. Right. So we were the Kitchenettes. And then there's the dill pickles, and then there's the... Uh, uh, there's some fun names that yeah, exactly. escape me. In exactly. Home, but, um, and uh, anyway, so it's fun, so give it a shot. All right. May and I were at Michael's. What a surprise. <laughs> and we found these balls that are plastic. And so I thought, if you make a ball like this, you can stuff it with stuffing or with roving or something like that. I thought, but if you knit it around this, then you would be able to just have the top part to hang it up it would be nice and easy round nice and round now the only thing with this is you have to have the exact size that's a thing um, but I was working at it and I really liked how it turned out so this is from the pattern called the 12 balls of Christmas and that's by Joan Janes she used to own the little red mitten um, and I did take this class with her now what happened is when I took this class with her, there, it, she started it out a certain way and then I messed up. So anyway, I, I came home and I had hardly anything done. And they <laughs> said, what did you do in two hours? I went, this is it. It was like this big. <laughs> <laughs> so needless to say, I needed to try it again. So here is what I did. I think it's beautiful. I love this part on it. Let yeah, it looks that. really nice. Now, yeah. in all honesty, I used a different size needle for the color work because I thought that's what I should do. In all honesty, um, probably by changing the size, I ended up having to do the decreases much faster at the top. And that's okay. I wanted it to go on here. Either I need to use a different kind of yarn. I use worsted weight. Maybe I should use DK and it would work better. But it's how you learn. So I'm happy with it. I would be willing to give it to somebody as a gift. So anyway, so that is my one of the 12 balls of Christmas. There's so many different patterns you can do. That's cool, yeah. And I really, really like it. Yeah, and it's the nice plastic, and it's not going to break. And... No, and the plastic kind of makes the knitting itself, the color work help it lay flat. Yeah, that okay. is really, really cool. So that is my Christmas present craft. craft. <laughs> it's a now, lot in my, in my mouth to say. And, and now I'm going to talk about the Christmas uh, future. What I'm going to do in the future because this has kind of inspired me. Oh, okay. Just seeing this, I thought, how are you going to do that? And right. I picked up other ones that, you know, the old school ones, they kind of came in half. And oh, you, right, right. You right, kind right. of uh, do what you do inside and you attach them like that. Oh, okay, cool. So I picked those up, but I really like this idea of the whole thing. Right, right. So it kind of got me thinking of what we could do with it. So what I did was I did a little experiment. I took these ones mm -hmm. and I just painted them mm -hmm. uh, with regular acrylic paint. Right. Now this is the second coat on these. Okay. And you can still see it shine through and you okay. can still see brush strokes. Right. And Absolutely. then I would glue this together. So I'm not sure that I would do that again. Okay. And I only used the one color just to make sh to see if I could blend before I started blending right, colors. Right, right. That makes but sense. But it maybe with a third coat that may cover, I don't know. But that's okay. Yeah, I'd so like I it. thought you could do this with the grandkids or right. kids. It's would be a good project. Exactly, that's can, a great idea. They can be as creative as they like. So then I thought, okay, um, let me try Mod Podge glue to make the paint a little thicker. Oh, that was a great and idea. And I thought maybe that would adhere mm -hmm. more to the plastic and maybe come in darker. It didn't really, um, but you can kind of see through. But it looks kind of neat, a different kind of look. It does look um, nice. I like that. Yeah. So that and as soon out. as you put the halves together, you don't see the through it as much. Through it as much. Yeah. 
So that one's okay. I like that one. I still wasn't really happy with the two things okay. together after okay. seeing this. Yeah. So then I thought, okay, what am I going to do with this? Can I tell you sometimes what they do with this stuff? What? Is they make uh, those bath bombs. Oh, okay. Do they? The, yeah. Well, maybe that's what they're for. I don't know. I don't know. I like your idea, but that's but, sometimes what they right. do. Mm -hmm. mm. It's good. I, no, now I'm thinking about bath bombs. <laughs> Oh, there's always a crack. <laughs> so then I thought, okay, what about if I did the paint on the inside, put the paint in there and kind of shook it up. Right, right. And so I did that and made the paint a little thinner. Right. And then I ended up, this one is just, it's still not dry yet as why I have paint on my hands. And so right. this turned out like this. Oh, I like that one. Um, but that was thinning down the paint. Okay. And adding water and giving okay. it a little shake. Okay. And the colors kind of blended in a little bit. So right. So I wasn't really right. kind of happy with that one. Okay. And um, the next day, the paint had kind of all run out because I think it was okay. so thin. So okay. I added more paint. Oh, okay. The next day, and that's why we're we're in still where we are. Mode. Thank goodness so, for her little pudding cups because that's what said the box. Yes, that is. <laughs> I saved those. Um, now, th so then I thought, you know, there's got to be a way to do this. But that, mm -hmm. so I thought YouTube, and I don't know why I didn't think of that at the beginning. <laughs> there's always YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so then I went onto YouTube and I saw somebody do what they do is they drip uh, a paint color in. Okay. Then they drip another paint color in and another paint color in. Right. As you'll see from here. Right. And then you kind of mix up with a skewer. Right. And then you, and then they just rolled it like this and it made it look so easy on YouTube. Right. Right. And mine wasn't really rolling. So I added just a tiny bit of water and gave it a okay, stir. Okay. Right. And then I just rolled it and rolled it and then added more paint, different layers. Right. Did it again. I really like the color of this one. But the the fun part of this project would be to do that with the kids because every time is going to look different. Exactly. You know, and exactly. It's gonna, the, the uh, results are cool. Forget the cookie decorating. Yes. Forget that. <laughs> have paint everywhere, you know? And so this is how this one has turned out, which I love. Oh, I really so love it. So I should have gone on YouTube at the very beginning. That was right. my first mistake. And it's um, really nice. This would be nice to start experimenting right. with different colors and, and mm -hmm. different things. Now, there's a little tint of this copper in here, if you could see that. And I love this color. I don't think I've ever used it on anything. Oh, wow. And That's it great. is an acry acrylic, comes in so many different colors. It does, absolutely. And this is copper color. Oh, I just it's really love nice. it. What do they do? They call it copper. Yeah, it is call? called copper. There you go. That's easy. Yeah. Easy to remember. And um, I think I would use more of that in my next one. I can't right. wait to do a couple more. So that's right. I think if we go get to Michaels now, they're going to be on like thirty percent off, half oh, price. Oh, brilliant! I would like to play a little bit more with this because I okay. really like how it turned out. All right, I'm seeing a Michaels run in our yes, future. Yes, I think that's great. So mm -hmm. it turned out so nice. It's really, really good. And to experiment was is kind of absolutely. Fun. So those are fun crafts to do. That's what I'm doing in the future. We'll see how they turn out. And um, next, we're going to talk about souvenirs. Before we talk about souvenirs, I just want to talk about a few things that you can make for your favorite pet for Christmas. Um, the first one is called Zuzu's Pet Towels, adapted for your dog and cat. So if you have the Zuzu's Petals by Karina Spencer, this comes with it and it just gives you an idea of what you can do. Now I had some red yarn that and I didn't really like it, to be honest with you. It doesn't feel... It doesn't feel very nice. I have made it. It's good. I don't know of anybody who has a dog that's that small, but if we find them, that's good. Um, that was the first and the last one that I did, but I am going to try and make another one of those and make it a little bit bigger and do that. Now, it does say, um, ne please never leave your pet unattended while wearing a cowl as it could be a choking hazard. So it says I don't think a dog head. would complain about the texture of this. I mean, no. it's, it's, you know, it's not something I'd want around my neck, but no. I don't think a dog would know. Right, that exactly. So but, yeah. does, do we know anybody that has a small dog? Mm -hmm. We could figure that out. We'll find somebody. We know somebody who's a dog walker and they would definitely know that. So that's the first thing. So then I thought, well, I could um, sew something. So this is like a kerchief, but it instead of it going, the collar going through it, it actually has snaps and it's reversible. So May is going to do the snap, make that low. I love that noise. And so it's that on one side. And then if you want to have a uh, camping August. scene. There you go. A winter scene, I guess. Exactly. And then the camping scene. There you are. So you've got a reversible. Exactly. So that's another possibility of something you can make. Now. Your dog would like that. Yes. Now, um, the other thing that you can make, which is great, is one of these towel 
toppers with the handicraft or cotton. You can take any towel that you want. And the reason why I'm talking about dogs, I found this. Okay, so this um, towel was $3.98, just gonna tell you. So by cutting this in half and doing a little bit of a zigzag or a surge at the top and then doing the crocheting, you actually, for out of the $3.98, you get two of them. Wow. Not much cotton, put a button on it, and then you're good to go. And such a personalized gift. Exactly. You know, I like that idea. Exactly. And that's how you were talking about that stitch there. Right, exactly. Cool. Yep, so I'm happy with that. I have, my son has a dog, so I've made um, one of those towels for him. And I'm going to make one for another friend of ours that has a dog. So that is some uh, Christmas gifts for puppies. Now. Speaking of Christmas presents, these are really my souvenirs. But my mom gave me some money uh, for Christmas. And by the way, we should update you on your mom too. Well, since we mentioned you your mom. You know what? My mom is doing much better. So she's still needing us to go in, but not as often. She's she, becoming a very much more And her, the bruising has gone from her face. She's getting used to her cast. And she actually, when I spoke to her, she goes, I'm able to use scissors. Okay, so she fell on the 11th of November. We're now um, a week away from Christmas, and uh, she's actually able to use scissors. So she was, she was thrilled. I was thrilled. So that's good for her. So she is doing much better. Now, what we did was we took a little drive out to the Little Red Mitten because I knew that they had some things from the yarn therapist. So this is a sweater yoke. Um, and so what you do is you take some other yarn that you're going to make the rest of the sweater with, and then you have this sweater yoke. And so what's going to happen is I'm going to do, um, I'm debating what sweater pattern, but I'll do some sweater pattern that has color work at the top. And then this will show like it's a, like I'm using all different colors of yarn, but it'll work its way through. Well, it'll be interesting to see how that looks. Yeah. And what, ha what happened, and the reason my thinking may th was probably thinking, you have yarn, why do you need to? I bought some light, lighter gray yarn and then COVID hit and then I, stop dyeing my hair and then this is what I've got. So the light gray sweater with a light gray hair with a not too much color on my face <laughs> was just a little bit too much gray everywhere. <laughs> so I thought if I had this as part of the yoke, then it would make it much better. So yeah, obviously nice. a little purple and a little pink. Never hurt ah, anybody. Nice little colors so in there. Different for you anyway. Exactly. Now the last podcast, I think, or the podcast before, I mentioned that I really wanted to design something. It is a goal. I'm going to do it. And so what I did with the rest of the money that my mom, I ordered this. Now this is that washable paper. It's from Coco Knits. And what it is is called their design portfolio. So it's a way, a place to have things organized. So if you had an iPad, you can put your iPad here. You could stick your phone in here. It's got elastic here in different colors, depending on what you enjoy. Um, and that will hold like a bullet journal um, or a bullet, bullet workbook. That's the idea. And so I am going to start trying to design. And the neat thing about this, and we learned about this from a store that was in Michigan and they had it and they said, it's washable paper. It's amazing. And I thought, washable paper? But it is amazing. And we've wow. seen it. Yeah. Now what are these for? So this is, if you're bored with this elastic, then you can have that elastic. Oh, really? Yeah, different colors. Wow. Just to change it up a little bit. And if you ever need elastic for pants that you're making, you know where to get it from. <laughs> There's a lot of elastic. That's not going to happen. All right. <laughs> anyway. So thank you, Maureen. Thank you, Mama. I appreciate that very much. Actually, I'm going to take that with me when I visit her tomorrow um, and let her know what she was able to get me for Christmas. So that was an early Christmas present. Absolutely. So this was from Little Red Mitten, and I ordered this from Needles in the Hay in Peterborough, nice. which we've been to that store, and they do a great job with shipping. Right. All right, May, what did you get for yourself? Well, I bought myself, well, you know, from last uh, podcast, you mm -hmm. know, I did the Great Lake Project. Which with, is beautiful. And I love that piece of wood. I just yeah. love that piece of wood. I'd had that piece of wood forever. You yes, know, you, I, I know. <laughs> and then I went into Lens Mills, lo and behold, with for wood. Uh, I mean, I didn't go in there for wood, but... <laughs> Lo and behold, there's this piece of wood exactly. looking right at me. Yeah. And so I got this piece of wood. It's in mesh right now. Right. I haven't opened it yet. Right. And here is this piece of wood in lens mills. I cannot wait oh, to do it. Oh, it's brilliant. So I'm thinking maybe another Great Lakes project oh, on this. Oh, that would be brilliant. Yeah. Or a really big Christmas ornament. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
You'd have to have my gigantic tree. Yeah, I don't want to paint on this one. I think I'm no. going to do some resin and uh, I think I that's perfect. Back. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, it was such a surprise. And lens mills. Yeah. I know. Who knew they sold wood? Exactly. It's funny. When I go to a yarn store and I take a long time, and May says, How do you spend so much time? And I just look at her and say, How do you spend so much time looking at wood in the in, either at Rona yeah. or Home Depot or at lens mills? And so we have an understanding of each other and what we enjoy, that's which right. is great. So thanks so much for watching. If you like what you're seeing, give us a thumbs up, comment down below, let us know anything that you'd like us to see. Um, obviously we've slowed, slowed down our visits to yarn stores. There's some that we can get to. The weather is, hasn't been, yesterday was a little interesting. Today's not so bad. Freezing rain yesterday, but uh, exactly. um, we're looking forward to, maybe we could do more local type things exactly. while we're kind of in this midst of this weather. Right. But we may have to kick up our craft projects uh, over the winter season. I think so, uh, absolutely. And then we'll kick up our stores exactly. in the spring. Yep, that sounds great. Um, please feel free to subscribe if you like what you're seeing. And we do want to wish you happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah. Um, and we really appreciate you watching. And until next time, you take care.